After a mass shooting at a church in Texas last week, churches here in Tallahassee, like Paul Russell Road Church of Christ, are looking for new ways to secure the safety of their congregation. To market this area for the growing and selling of oysters, it took over $27,000. But on Saturday night, all of that was ruined. A 10-foot whale. That's what washed up here at this beach 8 o'clock this morning. Folks in the area say they've never seen anything like it. TPD responded to a shooting that happened at this parking spot around 1055, which is just feet away from this residential area. Overall crime in Tallahassee is down, but murder rates are a record high. Tallahassee online police statistics show all active reports being covered by TPD and as of last week, the Leon County Sheriff's Department. Another project David Northway says is in process is security cameras throughout the communities. It would take a, an incident that we were aware of for us to go and pull that footage from that camera and view that footage to see what time that the incident happened and find that portion of it and view that portion of the camera, but we are not monitoring them. These cameras are on 24 hours and are placed on public street corners. Tallahassee Police Department is using its grant money to fund six surveillance cameras in the Bond community. These cameras cost $3,000 a piece and they're positioned strategically in high crime areas like this one where there's heavy drug traffic and prostitution. Floral and Saxon, Osceola and Holton, Gamble and Perry are a few street corners you will see these cameras. It's just so much for, for one little small neighborhood for you all to generate so many cameras. Cameras placed right in front of businesses. After speaking to multiple owners, no one is saying they were made aware. Charlotte Bryant says she found out when she came into work that morning. My road was blocked off the way to Brian has been working at Elsie's Cafe for almost 10 years. She says it's not the community she fears, but the intentions of the cameras. I, I hope that they also realize that it, it, it goes two ways, that the camera goes two ways. It shows what they're doing and what we're doing as well. So Bond community is the first to receive cameras in its neighborhood in Tallahassee. Angelicia Bruton, News 20. Tallahassee was chosen to be Florida's state capital due to its central location between St. Augustine and Pensacola, which were the largest cities in Florida at the time. But since then, Florida has expanded and residents are looking to move the capital. Florida Constitution Revision Committee received several proposals from citizens to move the capital to a central location like Orlando. Um, you give it to the voters, you don't know which way they're going to go. Leon County Commissioner Bill Proctor wrote a letter to Mayor Gillum and Commission Chairman John Daly voicing his concerns. The most violent community in the state of Florida for three years in a row. And next year, it went on the ballot in November. The likelihood of uh, it passing it would be good. To combat Tallahassee's high crime rate, Commissioner Proctor says the city should be placed under a state of emergency. That would open the opportunity for more state resources to directly be applied to um, this urban core, the central part of Tallahassee where a lot of these violent things occurred. Nine hearings took place across the state of Florida with over 1,400 proposals. But Carol Wessert says the average number to see on a ballot is no more than 10. They're going to have to make decisions. They're going to have to make some hard decisions. And um, I don't think it's, it, it's not like they're going to put 25 things on the ballot. They won't do that. Although Commissioner Proctor believes the odds are against Tallahassee if this proposal makes it to the 2018 ballot, he says the city still deserves to be the capital. Well, absolutely. Tallahassee has served very well and has experience. It's seasoned. The last day for the commission to submit proposals is tomorrow. In Tallahassee, Angelicia Bruton, News 20. For over 30 years, Cuban native Rudy Blanco has been living in America, but three weeks ago, during his annual check-in with ICE, he was detained. This is the only place he knows. His wife accompanying him that day says leaving alone was devastating and she knew something had to be done. I feel like I have to save him because that, that's the only thing I can do. I can't sit still. The two have never spent more than five days apart. Not having her family together makes her feel incomplete. We are a unit. Half of me is gone, and that's how our family is. Blanco was arrested on a drug charge in 1997 and placed on probation for a year. Later, he began seeking American citizenship. He wanted to become an American citizen, like his two children and myself. Shelly and Rudy have two children together. Their youngest, Noah, says the hardest part is taking over while his dad is away. It was hard, and I'm not, I'm, dad's always taught me, you know, keep a smile on your face and all that, so I've been staying strong for mom and them, but it's just been hard the whole time. The family is unsure if Rudy will return to Cuba or if he will be able to come home to his family in Perry. Can he stay here 
or is he going to be in a detention facility indefinitely? We don't know. Shelly says they were never given a reason why Rudy was detained in the first place, so I reached out to ICE to get some answers myself, but I have not heard back. Let's find out what's brewing. I'm Angelice Bruton, and this is Bruton's Brew. Dick Sporting Goods will no longer be a retailer of assault-style rifle guns. A group of thieves have stolen $5 million in cash from a Brazilian airport. According to authorities, the criminal stormed in Viracopas Airport in Brazil Sunday evening. North Korea is being accused of sending equipment to Syria that could be used to make chemical weapons. The economy of Venezuela has collapsed and its people are starving. The government has left its citizens for dead, and in a fight for survival, Venezuelan pirates have taken matters into their own hands. Cape Town is still without water and taps will be shut off on June 4th. At least six people have died and hundreds were injured in an earthquake that shook Taiwan's east coast. Authorities in Mexico say at least 18 people were injured in a ferry explosion in Playa del Carmen Wednesday. Hundreds of anti-North Korea protesters scuffled with riot police outside the Winter Olympic Stadium in South Korea. Hello, I'm Angelique Sia Bruton with your Bruton's Brew. Let's get into what's brewing today. A senior U.S. State Department official says plans are underway to move the U.S. Embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem in May. In Syria rebel-held territory, there was another day of intense bombardment despite passage of a United Nations resolution calling for a 30-day ceasefire. Activists say Syrian government forces launched blistering air and ground attacks against rebel forces. It comes on the heels of steel and aluminum tariffs, which also targeted China. Trump citing the need to reduce a trade imbalance has brushed off fears that his measures could spark a global trade war. That's going to do it for your Bruton Sprue. I'm Angelicia Bruton. Now let's take it over to Michaela for some entertainment.